Hi, my name is Pamela Quinn. Welcome to my YouTube channel. Today we're going to be discussing the esoteric topic of if God is real or not. Um, so let's start by imagining that you're in your backyard and I'm sure you have a favorite tree. You're staring at your favorite tree and I want you to ask yourself whether you believe in the existence of God changes the tree. So you're standing there believing in God, you're standing there not believing in God, does the tree change? And the answer, <laughs> in case you can't figure it out, is no, the tree does not change whether you believe in God or not. So the next question to ask yourself is, do I change? So do I change if I believe in God? Do I change if I don't believe in God? And that answer is complex and very interesting. So psychologists have done studies on people who have spiritual practices versus people who do not. And they say, they claim that people who have a spiritual practice believe in God on some form are happier than people who do not. And I don't know if that's true or not. I guess if it would be true, it's probably because a person is, um, I don't know, maybe feeling like they're not alone in the world on some level. Like you have something to talk to, something to give your problems to. But I don't even know if it's true or not, right? Who can trust any of these studies? <laughs> the laws of the universe don't change whether you believe in God or not. For example, we have like the law of gravity. So if I drop an apple, it's going to fall. Period, the end of discussion. It doesn't matter if I believe in God, it doesn't matter if I don't believe in God, when I drop the apple, the apple's going to fall. There's other universal laws like the law of gravity that work without exception. There's the, your, the law of pure potentiality. Anything is possible. There's the law of karma. If you make a good choice, good consequences, bad choice, bad consequences. There's the law of intention and desire. You know, know what you want, put a plan into effect to get what you want, you're gonna get what you want. That's manifestation. And there's a lot more laws. Uh, some people say there's up to 500 laws. There may be more laws or not. Whether you believe in God or not is irrelevant to the functioning of these laws. From a yogic perspective, and I'm always coming from a yogic perspective because I am a yogi. Yoga is a philosophy, yoga is a lifestyle, and you're familiar with the yoga asana that we do in the studio, possibly meditation. From a yogic perspective, there is a God, and yogis live with their third eye centered on the divine. Uh, the yogi chooses to live a life of service, service to humanity, uh, really in bhakti and devotion of the divine. Depending on what type of yogi you are, you'll have two different philosophies around God. Uh, the first says that God is a form, and it's one form, and it is not two forms, it is not three forms, it is just one form, and I know that's confusing. Most yogis are not in that vein of philosophy. Most yogis are in the vein of, if they're conscious at all, of the spiritual aspects of yoga, which is questionable. They're in the vein of there is one God, and one God is split into two forms, the forms being the masculine and the feminine, uh, the form being inaction and action. So it's this process in yoga that we go through of duality, and that's the practice of a really hatha yoga, sun moon yoga. It's to conquer the duality within ourselves so that we know God. The reason we practice yoga is so that we can still our thinking mind to the point that we can have an experience, a realization, something that's very tangible. It's physical. It's mental. It's spiritual, it's not mental. And then you have this knowingness, like you know there is God because you've had an actual experience. You now have a yoga, a relationship with the divine. And that is why you should ever step on the front of your mat 
is to still your thinking mind so that you can cultivate an experience to know truth. Truth as absolute reality. Truth that the tree is the tree. What you're looking at is truth. How you're looking at it is illusion, possibly. So let's say the tree you chose is the tree in your backyard, and the tree is beautiful, and it changes colors in the fall, and you sit under it, and there's a squirrel that lives in it, and you love this tree. That's a very beautiful experience of the tree. So you have a great relationship with the tree. You're happy when you see the tree. Or let's say the tree is a very large tree. It's a very old tree. Let's say it's a walnut tree. So it's dropping these walnuts in your yard and you were forced to go out there and pick them all up and your hands turn black. And then there's this poison ivy on the tree and you can never get rid of the poison ivy and you're highly allergic. So every time you even breathe near the tree, you get poison ivy. So that's your Registic or even tamasic, that's a very heated or dark kind of energy from that tree. So when you're looking at the tree, you don't like the tree. Okay, so on the one hand, you can love the tree. On the other hand, you can have a bad experience with the tree and now you don't like the tree at all, right? And this causes you suffering because you actually, your judgment is clouded. And maybe you decide, I don't like that tree. And I also don't like forests and I don't even like nature because I'm now afraid that everywhere I go, I'm going to get poison ivy. So your experience of the world is clouded now and now you can't see truth anymore and it's limiting you and it's hurting you and it's making you suffer. So that's how you change by standing in front of the tree and either being able to see the tree for the tree or not the tree for the tree. So is there a God? You're going to have to find out on your own. And the way you find out on your own is you come to yoga and you learn to meditate. The great sages of yoga, they say that God is no thing. You know, what is this God? We picture the man in the cloud with the beard, right? The sages say that God is no thing, nothing. Uh, the sages say that God is everything. And the sages also say that you are God. So for self-realization to occur, you don't have to come to yoga. You can do other things, but yoga is a methodology. It's a philosophy. It's a lifestyle. And when practiced appropriately, you will realize for yourself that there is or there is not God. I hope this is helpful. If you have questions, shoot them below, and I'm happy to uh, converse with you. Thank you.